Okay, I'm recording. Okay, I'm recording. That's you. That's what you sound like. What the fuck? <laughs> We're not friends anymore. <laughs> it's ogre. <laughs> um. All right. Are you going to take the intro? Yeah, you're listening to the commercial <laughs> boys. I am a commercial boy. Ah, uh, what's my your name? name? Yeah, do it. If you'll give me a fucking minute here, say your name. We've been waiting. The whole crowd's um, been I waiting. I know it. Obviously, yeah, I didn't forget yeah, my please name. Remember your that name. Would I'm be begging you. If you can't insane. remember your name, that would be call crazy. This off. I will take you to the Go hospital first. Because yeah, me, my uh-huh. name. You yeah. want to hear my name first? Yeah. You want my birth name? <laughs> yeah. Okay. It is. Dan Feingold. Okay. Daniel Moishi Feingold. I am Jacob A. Rod Burkle. I am Alex Rodriguez. Um, we're, you're listening to the commercial boys, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. We're back with a with a brand new invention. We're back. We successfully yeah. elected the correct senile man. Yes, we did it. Thanks to us, we have Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. The second. I'm not sure. I forget what his full name is. <laughs> Doesn't matter. He's our president now. <laughs> it sucks, but yeah. it sucks a little bit less. Prop twenty two passed. That one we so didn't. That's... We didn't. You know what? No, we did enough. You guys, our listeners, did fail. We on did that great. Front. Yeah, we did tell you to go to California and stop the vote, and you didn't do it. So this is on you, listeners. Speaking of listeners, what's the theme of today's episode? Today we're doing. That was a golden. Segue. We're doing. <laughs> suggestions from our from our lazy moron fans who did not do enough who did not stop prop Prop 22 22, do you deserve it no but But we're gonna give it to you you because we're magnanimous and we're more than you deserve uh some of these are are pretty old i've I've let some of these sit in the (laughs) inbox for quite a while that's fine um so we're finally gonna cover some commercial suggestions that that y'all have sent us is there any like cohesive i mean obviously i don't think our our listeners coordinated to send us the theme no no, no, it's, it's not a cartel of listeners. It's <laughs> it's just a hodgepodge just a of, bunch random of ideas. randoms. Yeah. Okay. Um. Can you like give me hints, or are we going in blind? What's the dealio today? I'll just read the email. Yeah, that do. we got sent. Okay. Don't have to be snooty about it. Sure. Okay. Taking it very personally. We're not friends anymore, by the way. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you guys missed it, but I don't off, know. If, I don't know if you missed that or if that was on the air, but we did mic, just break up as friends right before this episode, again. so there is a lot of tension, tension here. This will be a bad episode, yeah. but feel free to keep listening. Yeah, as opposed to the other, the other ones, ones, which are golden, which are bad, but we're friends. Yeah, this is bad in a in <laughs> a new no way. animosity there. Yeah, Jake Avellino says, "Oh, okay. Hi, Dan. It's Jake. I was telling Hold Vixen." On, I- this is not me, Jake, right? No, this is just my work email. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just read emails that my boss has sent me. <laughs> just, can you please edit this? We need it's not by, a it's suggestion. Not a it's like <laughs> work that I have overdue. Yeah, your boss berating you. It's like, Hi, Daniel. I've been trying to contact you for three weeks. <laughs> you are not returning my emails. If you don't return any emails, I will have to terminate you. You are, se- you are severed, for sure. <laughs> Um, it's Jake. I was telling Vic something funny that happened at work. She thought you might want to use it in your podcast, question mark. So not a lot of confidence right off the bat. (laughs) So this might be a shit commercial. We have no idea. This is someone who was forced to write an email at gunpoint by his fiance. It does not sound like they sent a commercial. It sounds like they have an idea, but it might not be a commercial. He's like half remembering a dream he had. (laughs) He just gets us to lot of like dissect his dream. Yeah, send us <laughs> suggestions dream, and we boys. will roast the hell out of you. Oh. I this was trans- transitioning into a dream analysis podcast. That would be fun. This is... Um, if you have commercials you want us to review or you just have a dream you want us to, to read psychoanalyze. on the uh, by the way, the, commer- the the email address is commercialboyspodcast at gmail.com. Oh, yeah, let's I mean, get that. Yeah. Let's so get that if, out of there. If you, if, you, if you hear this and, and you think that you, you can do better. Yeah, if you think you're, you can do something funny, if you want to be funny, I okay. guess. We're like 25% through this. <laughs> the first email we're covering. Okay, fucking, I'm going to stop talking. One of the new sales reps at the company I work for called me very excited because he thought he had received a phone call from someone who would buy PitchBook. This man said he had been given $25 million by, quote, investors already, and was looking for an investor to give him a billion dollars. This sounds like a scam email. Not then, e- <laughs> this sounds like we've been sent a scam email. <laughs> <laughs> and then in parentheses, we sometimes help startups raise money, like $5 million or whatever. Okay, whatever. It's not even a big not, deal to Jake. $5 million, <laughs> whatever. 
A billion dollars is a lot of fucking money, so I figured this person was either crazy or senile. I looked at the website, found a really weird video. He also has a section where he just lists companies and job titles and does not explain anything about why or how these people are relevant or what their names are. One of them is Pan Am, which went okay. out of business in 1991. Years ago, yeah. Um, I just want to say that halfway through, I did just white out and I just kind of disassociated because I was thinking about the fact that this listener, Jake, is able to just put together $5 million and has failed to do so for us. And I'm feeling a little jilted. That is that is kind of rubbing it in our face. Yeah, that you We can retroactively just... don't deserve it, though, because we did not <laughs> we give did this email him. the attention or the respect I that did, it deserves. I did admit to not listening to it. We, we let this sit in the show. inbox for like two months. Then we opened it, immediately got distracted. And now <laughs> I'm angry that he, this man, who is a nice listener, has failed to give us $5 he million. He listens dollars. for no reason. The content is shit. Shit. And he's still listening, Listens. and you're mad because he's not giving you cash. Yeah, I deserve some cash money, I think. I think I work hard, and I think I earned it. Please send us cash at commercialboys at gmail.com. <laughs> send us a picture of a check. Yeah, please. We will print it out, try to deposit it, and go to jail. Yeah, for sure. I do want us to visit my friends in jail, so please try to send us money through an email. Uh, all the commercials that we watch and yeah. talk about, if you're if you're listening on YouTube, you're about to watch them. If you are on uh, Spotify, wherever, anywhere else, check the, the description. There's yep. going to be a link. Okay. Uh, so you want to just hop into this commercial, Let's... which, by the way, we, we were given no information about the content of the ad at all. Yeah, I don't we know anything about this. We were just told it's weird. <laughs> this could literally be anything my mind is adrift it is lost at sea let's fucking sink let's go flarecraft corporation introduces a new form of transportation using ground effect to explain ground effect notice the similarity between the flare wing on the craft and the swan's wing. The shape maximizes the pressure developed between the wing and the water. This is ground effect. By simply turning the wheel, the craft banks easily into a turn. It's very maneuverable in harbors and around other boats. What a wonderful way to travel over water. Think of the possibilities. Who's taking the plot summary on this one? Okay, plot summary. Is, is there a plot? By the Once way, again. The subject of the email that Jake sent me is the future of air-based water travel. Air-based water travel, which I I spent a good 20 seconds trying to piece together in my head what that possibly could mean. Because I don't... What is... What do you think air-based water travel means, Dan? I think it's a plane that flies in the air, but only above the water. Okay, but did you think that prior to watching the commercial? No, I I, I mean, <laughs> even post-watching the commercial, I Still can't say sure. that with 100% confidence. Um, you want to take the summary or should I describe it? Uh, I, It's footage, really shaky footage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy it seems- Looks like it was shot on a VHS camera. Some of, yeah, okay, okay. So there's like continuous footage of this, this kind of spacecraft, aircraft thing, like hovering over the water. Yeah. And then diagonally passing through the screen are other smaller videos <laughs> where the movement is all janky. It looks like them. someone took like the draw tool on like Microsoft Video But they edit. didn't have a steady hand no. at all. So they don't go in a straight line, which is very easy to accomplish, by the way. This video kind of utilizes the aesthetics of the opening of the first Borat film. <laughs> it <laughs> yes, looks like shitty true. Kazakhstani newsreel yeah, footage. That's a good call. It it looks like it was made in the eight, using 80s technology during the year 2009. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's beautiful. This guy seems to think that he's like invented the airplane because it's like, look, compare the the wings on this machine to, to the wings of a goose. Yeah. And understand how it generates the lift, allowing man to fly. <laughs> it's the right brothers. I think it's worth noting that this commercial, which is seemingly is a commercial to in entice investors to invest in this startling new invention of aviation, 
Um, I don't believe it's it's not for mass consumption. It's not meant to be viewed by people like you or me. It's not meant to be viewed by the man on the street. It's meant to be viewed by the elites, the wealthy elites who can back such a project. Yeah, this is called flare craft, by the way. Okay, so it's got like a nice pizzazz, a flare. I hope that <laughs> snapping did get picked up on my. I love that it it says um, you turn the vehicle with only the turn of the wheel. Where also this guy has invented the concept of a operating wheel. a vehicle with yeah, a yeah, wheel, yeah. but we never see the inside of what no. it looks like from from within this vehicle it, so it's it's very bizarre it's it's a lot of, i i did enjoy this commercial because obviously i mean we checked that there's a kickstarter also attached to this project mm-hmm. that has failed to meet its goal they were asking for four hundred and ninety thousand dollars i believe they got about seven thousand four four hundred and nineteen thousand nine hundred okay and they got about seven thousand they were they they were just too cowardly to call it 420 i don't blaze know what it. that I is i don't know why they didn't ask us but to they made it. about seven thousand so i mean i don't Which know why that in and of itself is kind of crazy yeah but also i mean you watch the commercial they deserved far more i mean that i genuinely feel like this was a little bit of a troll it just mirrored too maybe just because i'd seen borat again too recently <laughs> it just so strongly embodied that aesthetic i'm like this is a goof this is a gaff one Jake of, is one trolling of my us favorite right moments is when the words like think of the possibilities start to come onto the screen in like stupid yeah. iMovie effects but then it cuts away and then it just and it then it just right says, back on and then it's so we the, hear a voiceover that says think of the possibilities and then it's like a well, green first of all that's not background. you're making me do your, your job, job. <laughs> your job making this video is to demonstrate the possibilities of what you're just is. like look it's a fucking play Plane, plane with wings. I don't know. Wi- it lands a plane on water. with wings. That lands. <laughs> I, my grandpappy looked at a plane and said, "What if we gave it wings? Wings, not just propellers, but also wings." Um, my favorite little bit is one of those little video in videos that comes through in diagonal. Is not actually a video. It's just the logo for Lockheed Martin. And and which like I don't like understand. Jake pointed out, there's we don't know how that. Is related no, to this invention? No context. Was are they he inspired by Lockheed Martin? Are they is trying to pitch look this up to? to Lockheed are they Martin? funded? Yeah. Like, do they want? Do they? Are they envisioning the military using this as a weapon? Is really funny. funny. If you get killed by this machine, you a hundred percent deserve to die at the hands <laughs> of this machine. It's just like a duck plane, basically. I think we we've had these for years. Like, yeah, I don't think this is even a new thing. No, well, there I, are planes that can land and I'm take the, off from water. Yeah, I saw but that. But like those James planes Bond are great the because then they can also fly, fly over up, land. High, because you're do. flying. They, so if you're <laughs> flying, why can't you fly over the land? Those it's also the opposite. Have wings, by it, the way. <laughs> it's the opposite of the hoverboard from Back to the Future. Oh, yes, yes, where yes. It on, where it can fly, but only, only on water. water. Yeah. So it's for the future that Steven Spielberg envisioned in the 80s, but it's the answer to the hoverboard, basically. And also much more like unwieldy than the hoverboard. It's just not good. I can't I can't say that I would based on this commercial, fund this plane. But golly gee, am I sure happy I watched that commercial. (laughs) It gave me such life. It made me so happy. Yes, Jake and Victoria, thank you very much for sending that over. Yes, this was a bounty. This was a treasure trove of goodies. Thank you so much. Uh, Commercial boy, Jake. Yes. Would you invest in Flarecraft based on the commercial that we just watched? Absolutely Actually, I was about to say absolutely not, but uh, now I do have to think about it. Because, like, based on the commercial itself, I had such a good time. I'd be like, here's $2 for your fun little troll commercial. You're not actually trying to build a plane, right? You're not actually inventing <laughs> a plane. We've been there before. Um, I I am actually convinced that this is a troll operation. Would I put my money on the line? No, but I will say I do kind of wish they made their goal. I would put someone else's money on Absolutely. the line. Absolutely, like Jake. If Jake yeah, yeah, would yeah. send us some of his millions, Jake, that he's selfishly hoarding. Your job is to what, like, scoun- scavenge together, scavenge together money for like worthwhile investments. You are, you are not doing your due diligence. You are negligent in your work if you do not fund this project for these people. So, Jake, this is my challenge to you. Do your goddamn job. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right. That's Flarecraft. 
Uh, you want to do one of the worst commercials that I've ever seen in my life? Yeah, I've been waiting. That's why we do do this podcast. Okay, it comes courtesy of 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 uh, Emma. Is there an accompanying attached email with like? There body? is not an email. She just texted me this. Oh, I thought it was just an email. No subject. No body. Just video. I was very <laughs> excited, but regardless, I'm still excited. <laughs> okay, I I'm gonna translate. As best I can, and say that we're g- going to going to watch the ah. we're going to watch the commercial now. <laughs> you know what really works is my noggin. You want smooth skin, so you shave. But shaving just gives you bad bumps, rashes, and pimples. You woke up grumpy. Your legs are bumpy. Pump hits feel lumpy, and you got a hard day tonight. And your bikini line looks like the scene of a crime. Ingrown hairs are stuck in place, so zits are breaking out all over your face. I know, girl. It ain't fair, staying up late, shaving pubic hair. Had smooth skin, late last night, now it all nasty, that ain't right. Let me educate you what's going on, making them pimples pop out of dawn. Straighten up your legs, waxing your stubble, lazy and lady parts causing trouble. If you want the fewest bumps you ever seen, don't skip this after waxing or shaving cream. No need to cover all up dressing like a nun. Show off your sexy skin and enjoy some sun. So watch me now, just, just roll on tan skin. Bye-bye. Prickly private parts. Show off your legs. Just roll on tan skin. And watch her cup up, blow up with hearts. Get your free bottle. Feel like a model. Free sample bottle. Leave those bumps, boils, and burns behind. Try the blue bottle. Legs like a model. Tan skin free bottle. Click now before they change their mind. But don't just take the word of a feisty, bald headed rapping goddess. I have no more razor bumps. No. It's amazing. I love this stuff. It's smooth down here. I don't know how I went on with life without it because this stuff works. You need to try this stuff. Magic in a bottle, Sue had to say. My crota saved my life that day. Amazing stuff. You have to try. Kim says it's a real goodbye. Can't live without my 10 skin bottle. Face so smooth, I feel like a model. I could share these all day long. Read the rest on Amazon. This one just irritates me. Leah's review says works like a charm. So why'd you only give it four stars at Leah? Working like a charm's not good enough for you? So click below. Get your pretend skin. Perfect skin looks so good on you. Nothing to lose. Try your pretend skin. All your wildest dreams will come true. So legally, we cannot guarantee that all your wildest dreams will come true. But we ain't gonna say they can't. If you have skin and you want to treat it like a peach in the Alabama sun, click below for your free sample bottle. What you waiting for? It's free! Come on, I can't click it for you. In your own time, sugar. I get paid by the hour. Quick quiz for you, Jake. Um, What is the product? What's the product? I'm so tired, man. (laughs) I'm so fucking tired, man. I thought I... I thought I was ready. I was so hyped for this. This is um, the blue bottle, free tan skin. <laughs> um, look like a model. Look like a model. Um, get rid of those bumps, those lumps. Um, that's the name of the product. All of those things. Um, um, Dan, I'm Can really I ask sorry. Can you to do the plot? Would that be okay? Yeah, man. Um, so a white lady who's bald is rapping aggressively trying to sound like a 90s r&b guy mm-hmm. and it comes off as vaguely racist i'm glad but that you said it yeah yeah I it comes agree, off as i watched this and i was like man i'm very white but i i think, think this is racist i think this is racism. i think this is appropriation I think this is what racism looks like in 2020 so, yeah I, it it was just very jarring anyways um so this is our mc narrator um, this person definitely went to NYU Tish from Connecticut, trying to sound, <laughs> pretend like they're from Alabama. Um, and it starts off that she's narrating this woman who's got Carly Rae Jepsen hair, um, <laughs> yeah. who's got, who just shaved last night, but hair's already growing in. She's already got pubic hair growing in. Her leg hair's growing in. Her, her armpits, armpits are lumpy. lumpy. Her legs looking bumpy. The, it's, it's a, it's a sight to behold. And, so it seems like this this rapper lady is trying to narrate this predicament, and then the solution is, I don't know, this after shaving cream. 
And then you pointed out that this commercial is basically like Lord of the Rings because it do be having seven endings. And also it features Smeagol. <laughs> yes, it, it does. The rapper is probably, um, oh, what's his name? Andy Circus. Uh, Andy Circus for sure. <laughs> um, it, then it goes from we've finished narrating this woman's pre-date routine where she's decided to use this new product to we have testimonials from not actors, totally real people saying how much they love this product. And then we go to rapper lady narrating Amazon reviews and getting angry that someone said works like a charm and only gives four stars. And like a twisted mirror, I have no choice but to see myself reflected in it as our <laughs> fans send us nice commercials to review and we, and we yell at them. them. Um, but the commercial is not over. Then we go back to her rapping and saying, you got to get your free bottle. I'll wait. I get paid by the hour. And then I think it's done. I might have missed some stuff. It's like, it, it is kind of like a 2006 comedy in that the end is all of the, the featured players just dancing together. Yeah. And this is not earned. These aren't characters that I we care about. The there love. is no, no resolution. I get no joy from watching them dance. The this is a commercial. Of this commercial. It's so long, too. It, well, oh God. Yeah, it did feel like the commercial was literally five minutes long it was probably like two minutes which is like not absurd length of a commercial but it just feels so long it also like the costumes and the bright vibrant backgrounds it feels like a target commercial from the year 2005 yeah it's just got very odd very bad like bush era suburbia aesthetics that are very painful to me Mm -hmm. there's just a lot to unpack as the kids say it's it's a lot. It, I think specifically what really bothers me about it is just how loud it is and abrasive. It's very annoying. Yeah, like, the narrator lady sucks shit. Like, it'd be one thing. There's no... It, it sounds like she's trying... There are moments where there's, like, singing. Yeah. it's very bad. The lyrics ain't good. This is not a Lonely Island track you're getting here. No, it's not no, good, no. like, musical comedy. They didn't enlist Weird Al Yankovic for their product. It sounds like she's trying to do... This white lady is trying to do, like, a Leslie Jones impression, almost. Mm. And it... it, it it really only works because Leslie Jones... There's a point Jones, where she's like, you're nasty. Now don't nasty. Yeah, it's like Leslie Jones is like a once in a generational charismatic talent who can pull off this like aggression that feels like familiar. Well, also it's like, yeah. a, it's a bald white lady. Yeah. And like, I'm sorry, there's something a little bit scary about a bald white lady yelling at me. Yeah. <laughs> There just is. Something in my lizard brain just doesn't <laughs> just like recoils it. recoils in horror a wee bit. <laughs> Whereas if Leslie Jones is yelling at me, I'm like, all right, fair, whatever. I'm listening to you. You probably got something important to say. But this lady is just... I guess the idea behind the character is that she like loves shaving so much so that she just shaved much. her she head. She cares so deeply about shaving and she wants you to have the same great experience. But she's also hostile in the way, in like a jarring and off-putting way like we are. That's not fun to listen to. <laughs> To and it's bad to hear. There's a reason we review commercials for products and, and don't try do to make it. them. Yeah. Because one, we have nothing worth selling, and two, we couldn't sell it if we wanted to. Um, but yeah, this commercial just it, it I said it felt like it was five minutes long. The 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 core problem that is central to this commercial is that the MC sucks shit, man. She's not good to be around. She gives off such rancid energy. <laughs> the vibe, she fails the vibe check real fucking hard, I man. dare to say she nasty. This one just irritates me. <laughs> she, in fact, do be nasty. She is bumpy, and quite frankly, she's also lumpy. <laughs> and I good. highly doubt that she got a hot date tonight. No. Although I, I did like the Carly Rae Jepsen hair woman. She kind of dips halfway through. We don't see her again. The last thing we see is she takes a picture of, of her, her legs, shaving legs and, she gets and gets millions, millions of likes. Of likes. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I like girls that look like Carly Rae Jepsen. Carly Rae Jepsen, if you're listening, hit me up. I'm wearing your shirt right now. Um, that I was can fun. attest to that. <laughs> yes. Um, other than that, like, I don't know, just rancid vibes all around from the aesthetics to the music to the personalities involved. Just dog shit commercial. Emma, fuck you for sending this to us <laughs> once again. I, we're over two on me liking the listeners as a result of these commercials. I wish we had different listeners. Oh, I really like what you said about it looking like a Target commercial. It really does look like a reunion of like all the children who were in a Target commercial <laughs> in 2003, only like now they all do heroin. <laughs> they 
they do. They really just need some money to get their next fix. Um, it's a beautiful multiracial coalition of women who were in Target ads and are really hurting right now. Yeah. They just need something, man, anything to keep their careers afloat. It's just, yeah, there's something really not just dated about the aesthetics of the commercial, but just like they're not of this time. They feel so like hyper real in a way that just screams advertisement that just is not, it doesn't resonate at all. Like you can't be an advertisement anymore. Your advertisement needs to be like influencers trying to peddle you shit on Instagram. It needs to be like this sense of like, parasocial relationship that's the only way you can sell shit is by creating a parasocial relationship and this commercial aesthetic so like aggressively doesn't even try to do that it's like we're not real look at us isn't that <laughs> funny we know we're not real it's like that's not gonna work guys look Doesn't work. there are no consequences in the hell dimension that we live in <laughs> i mean by the product that actually kind of sounds like the reality we do live in there are no consequences <laughs> in hell dimension so when you frame it like that actually maybe it is the most good com- it is the most reflective of 2020 but god just i mm. on a scale of nasty to hot date what do you think I mean, I, I do think it's I do think it's ingrown pubic hair, this commercial. <laughs> this commercial is 100% ingrown pubic hair to me, and I really wish it weren't. I really wish I, I would do anything to get it removed. Please, doctor, help me out. Well, boy, do I have the product for you. Uh, oh, I don't want to do any more. I'm already fried. Emma oh, yeah, Jake, by the way, she you. is wearing a tiara. Who and, is and she? A, oh, yeah. The, the main character. She fluctuates between, and like... And she's wearing a, a banner across her, well, her chest that says, some, Queen of Smooth. <laughs> at some points, she's the beauty queen. At other points, she's almost like, oh, what's a uh, Flava Flav? Like, she's got a big gold chain. If you can't handle her at her, her Flava Flav, Flav, you don't, you don't deserve her. At, at her, her Queen of queen. Smooth. <laughs> at her Queen of Smooth. Ah, uh, she was not the Queen of Smooth, I dare say. She was uh, not smooth at all. <laughs> I'm having fun. With these all right. Well, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, <laughs> we'll end it on the most clever note uh, and move on. <laughs> move on to some commercials that Day sent us. You know, people are say people say to me, Jake, you gotta end strong. You gotta end with your best. Do material. people say that to you? Yeah, people, people are coming up. People are coming up to me on the street. They're like, Jake. You got to make, I love how you end strong all the time. You always save your best material for last. And I'm like, I want to switch it up on them. I want to try ending with total dog shit. So this, <laughs> That's what this is. So people are coming up to you. They're like, this is the one thing I enjoy about Yeah, you, yeah, Jake. yeah. You're really good at podcasting because you do this. And I'm like, I want to switch it up on them. I want to try to innovate. And you innovate. don't want to do that anymore. I'm innovating. You're not ready for my innovation. <laughs> Your innovation is to make it shitty. Yeah, 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 yeah. No one's thought to make a shitty podcast before. Subject. The baby pop. Ba- the ba- Subject. <laughs> The baby bottle pop phenomenon. <laughs> oh my fucking god, I remember baby this bottle is, pops. This, hey, commercial boys. Honorary commercial boy, Day Delia here. Day, you are a commercial boy. Yeah, 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 for sure. With the suggestion of another musical commercial phenomenon. The other day, a friend of mine was eating Fun Dip, and then suddenly, a sweet, sweet tune intrusively pooped into my <laughs> head. Is that a typo, or did they deliberately write poop? Listen, I'm just reading what was written. That's fair. (laughs) It was the Baby Bottle Pop theme song. From all the Baby Bottle Pop commercials, I was shocked at my ability to remember it. I know you are both no stranger to the musical commercial phenomenon, and thought you might enjoy watching these radically strange commercials that span over 20 years. Let me know Mm, what you think. Hold on. They've been marketing Baby Bottle Pops for 20 years now? Uh, yeah. I have not... Maybe it's because I stopped watching Nickelodeon, if you could believe it, but I have not seen one of these in eons. It's like definitely... Yeah, since like 90s. That makes sense. Baby Bottle Pop. That do be making sense. Pretty much our whole lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you guys remember the jingle? I Who do. Who is your Baby favorite Jonas Pop. brother? Baby... <laughs> it's, it's Joe. I do like Joe Jonas the best. <laughs> uh, Nick is up there. If anyone says Kevin, they're wrong. I like Frankie, the weird Nunez? little one. No, yeah, I like Frankie <laughs> Nunez. He's my favorite Jonas well, brother. <laughs> the Jonas brother mom wouldn't freaking adopt him. <laughs> And it's fucked up. Now, wasn't there a little Jonas brother who never got to be in the band? I believe that. I always felt bad for him. It's like the Imagine all your siblings brother. are in a band and you're like <laughs> you're too 11. shitty. <laughs> you're shitty and also shitty. eleven. I think he was just young. Uh, sucks to be young. If there's one thing I've learned is that young people they fucking suck. We're let's okay. We're gonna watch the first 
baby bottle yeah, pop commercial. Yeah, Are you okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. You good? No, good? You got that out of your system? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Fuck. You lick and dip. Hey, everybody, we're the Jonas Brothers. Hope you enjoy tonight's show. One, two, three, four. Baby bottle pop, baby bottle pop. You can look at it, shake it until you get it. Thank you, good night. Baby bottle pop, baby bottle pop. You can look at it, shake it until you get it. Man, these shows are getting longer and longer. Mm-hmm. At Baby Bottle Pop, we take silliness very seriously. Our intense powder and delicious candy pop creates maximum levels of silliness. Mm. Baby Bottle Pop, packed full of silliness. It's all in the dip. Baby Bottle Pop, it, lick it, awesome. it, it. Sweet. Sweet. Cool dip and twist, dude. Baby Cause you're going to go online to create your own crazy baby. Babybubblepop.com. Ask your parent before going on. Hey, Dan. Hey, Jake. I'm the baby. Gotta love me. <laughs> dinosaur for you. <laughs> what did we just watch? We watched four baby bottle wow. pop commercials yes. spanning, as, as Day promised, 20 years. Absurd. But yeah, I mean, that last one definitely felt like it was from the year 2015 or some shit like that yeah yeah so you want you let's do these in order yes yes the first course. one i i guess is, is one of the early Earliest baby bottle one. pop it's from commercials 1998 introducing a world not familiar with baby bottle, bottle pop, pop to the product and the first lines are hey he looks like a baby it's it's a bunch of like middle school middle girls i guess going yeah, yeah yeah hey they look like babies which is absurd and you're supposed to want to look like <laughs> i was gonna say if there's one thing i remember from when I was 12, 13 it's years old. It's that being a baby was awesome. I wanted to look awesome. like a baby so fucking <laughs> badly. My deepest desire was to have cute girls point at me and be, hey, that guy looks like a baby. I'm like, yes, I'm the baby, gotta love me. Um, but otherwise, it feels like an abs- like peak 90s commercial like the tune is very 90s the the aesthetic is incredibly 90 i feel like i saw like everyone was wearing like a rugby shirt or some shit <laughs> yeah, the production yeah. values all started like decently high yeah they're these are all like decent well-produced commercials yeah uh i mean it's just the most deranged product in the world this is the most demented of the yeah, candies i don't I know think. why anyone would probably want to be like i want sugar I want it to look like I'm sucking on a pacifier. I want it to be weirdly phallic and also weirdly infantilizing. Yeah. Please give me this. This is how I choose to ch- just chase my sugar. I high. mean, I love candy. I definitely have a sweet tooth, but like I've never been into the products that are just like straight up sugar. sugar. That's insane. Yeah, it's a bad product. And also it's a weird way to just like market. It. Yeah, what? what a, you can l- shake it, twist, twist it, it, munch it, lick it, bop it. Twist it, pull it. <laughs> it's bad. I mean, it's just weird. It, it's it's a weird product. It's it works because that fucking jingle is. As soon as they sent us the baby, I don't know if it picked up on mic, but I just immediately started saying "baby bottle pop, baby bottle pop." <laughs> I knew it in the back of my fucking lizard brain. Um, that first specific is commercial, one of the things tongue it. So they go, baby bottle pop, baby bottle pop. You can look at twist it and tongue it. No, it's absolutely. not. It can't There's be no tongue way. It. What are they saying? Had, they would have had to censor it if it was. Tongue <laughs> it. You cannot get that. Even though Reagan like said like, yeah, you can advertise to children. Doesn't matter. Like you, you still cannot say tongue it in a children's commercial. You will commercial. still go to You will pay. go to horny jail for sure if you <laughs> tell a kid to tongue it. You can't do that for children. Um, but yeah, I, I don't recall ever see, I, the middle two commercials, I definitely recall seeing this first one from 98. I, I was still bopping around to fucking the law and order theme song in my parents, like old apartment in Brooklyn. I was not old enough to be like understanding what the fuck I was looking at. So I don't remember this first commercial. You have any recollection of this or any of them? I don't really remember any of these. The jingle is like somewhere deep in my brain, but. It's uh, n- really not registering anything well, as I, don't I think watch. I've ever them. talked about this. What did you watch growing up? 
Like what? I don't know. TV- normal stuff. Get off my back. What? Okay. First of all, that begs the question. What the fuck is normal stuff to you? It's it like what? Freaking normal. Yeah, yeah. You were watching the World Series of Poker at five. I get that. Yeah. Like what else were you watching? Um, for, like, like what? Cha- like what channels? Uh, I watched like Cartoon Network mm-hmm. and Nickelodeon and yeah. like Discovery. Well, did I you like, watch like a lot of TV growing up? I feel like this is essential so that we know like what frame of reference we're coming into. Like what commercials are deeply ingrained in our psyche. Like I think an average amount. Okay. I know I know I watched like SpongeBob before I went to school. Okay. I do remember that. Yeah, yeah. Most people did, I think. Yeah. Well, most people our age. Um, yeah, watching the same stuff. Cartoon Network, some Disney Channel, because mostly because my brother had it on Nickelodeon. Mm, yeah. Um, I remember as I got older, like there was a TV station that was like dedicated to. I I don't know if you remember G Four. It was no. like the gamer channel. Oh, like I remember it had like early Olivia Munn on it. I'm like, ooh, look at this hot girl talking about video games. I'm in, and that was it. Um, but it was like <laughs> that, and like I watched WB when they had like Yu- Yu Gi Oh on or whatever. Um, and this commercial was that. De- this commercial, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's, that's right where they would be playing. Yeah, yeah. What was banned? What were some banned shows, shows? in your household? Uh, it's so funny um, because like nothing was super banned. Like I, I watched basically whatever I wanted. Not that I was trying to watch like crazy shit, but I was able to watch uh, the two shows my parents thought were too stupid. Of all the shows I watched, <laughs> yeah. the dumbest possible shows I could have watched to them were Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Yes. Yeah, 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 same. Which. I mean, it looks like such an ugly fucking show, and literally one of the characters is just, oh, uh, so I get it. I feel like they were like, I don't know if this will hurt my child, but I am 100% sure that it is not helping, so yeah. it's gotta it's go. Not her- it might not be hurting my child, but it's hurting me, so they cannot watch it. The other one was The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. How are they the exact same? I'm Did not even kidding. Not my- <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I- it was the exact same, There's too. There's gotta be something about the aesthetic and the language of those shows that so thoroughly disturbs they were like, just so Long Island suburban and stupid yeah they like I think they reveled in their stupidity stupidity in a way that a lot of television shows didn't like yeah. I feel like a lot of television shows at the time or kids shows I should, were kind should, of ashamed of how dumb they were yeah they didn't want to be perceived as kids shows they and wanted Spongebob, some veneer yeah. of respectability right but Ed and Eddie and Billy and Mandy were just like absolutely not we know what we are we're dumb dumb and we're loud and we're proud and spongebob is silly but it's also like kind of wholesome and clever sometimes and it's also so thoroughly saturated into the mainstream that you like trying to ban your kid from watching spongebob is like trying to prevent your kid from watching star wars it's not it's just so thoroughly embedded in the fibers of our collective culture it's just not fucking gonna happen they're gonna see it right but those ed and eddie and billy and mandy are kind of like Just, like, if you talk to anyone who grew, like, I guess late millennials, early Gen Z kids will remember those shows, but outside of that specific niche of, like, that era of childhood, probably not going to know it. We're talking about Baby Bottle Pop commercials. Yeah, okay, so the second Baby Bottle Pop (laughs) commercials uh, features the Jonas Brothers. I remember this commercial. And today's question. I do remember this commercial. I don't remember this one. This one is- Because you were not watching Disney Channel. My brother had Disney Channel on all the time. I watched a few Disney Channel, like, animated shows. I was never into the live action stuff, so Jonas Brothers, I'm like, oh, Jonas Brothers, they're they're for- Girls Teenage girls, and I am a cool guy who doesn't watch Jonas Brothers. Now I fucking love the Jonas Brothers, because, like, it's not worth the effort to pretend like you hate them <laughs> but i do remember this commercial kind of clever kind of cute that's pretty funny yeah i like this idea so it's a, it's a jonas brothers concert a bunch of fans are like excited for them to come out they come out they sing the baby bottle pop theme song in like 15 seconds and then leave they book then it they dip. backstage and they start dipping their baby bottle pops Ooh. <laughs> Then they're like, wow, these shows, I feel like they just keep getting longer, which is funny. Oh, very funny because it was stage. unbelievably short. Yeah, and they just want to get back to their baby bottle pops and they play a rock and cover version. Let's be let's be honest, it does slap. The cover is great. The Jonas Brothers are perfect. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it's a cute little clever commercial. I remember it. It's baby a good bottle. one. Yeah, it makes fun of its own short little jingle. Still a terrible Self-referential product. Self-referential and good. I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, this is just nasty. Now it's all nasty. Yeah, it's just sugar 
that picks up it's more sugar. Ge- it's actually kind of genius when you think about it. Like, in imagine being in a boardroom and you're like, okay, okay, how do we sell cheap candy? We don't even make candy. We just sell like the sugar. raw ingredients yeah, yeah, yeah. of candy to kid. What do they want? They want the sugar. Just sell them the sugar. Can't you buy sugar in a grocery store? Why wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a little, it's, it's, it's a little ring. Yeah, it's and like a the, pacifier. it's colorful. It's a pacifier. You know how kids always love being called babies? Babies. Kids love. The, I'm the baby. Gotta love me. They love it. <laughs> um. It yeah, it's still a garbage product. It was but definitely an executive who was like snorting cocaine. Like, <sighs> I gotta come up with this freaking kids product, and oh. then looked at the coke and was like, "Oh my god, this is the kids product." <laughs> I'm just thinking of the Hudsucker proxy where they just try to sell the circle. It's, for kids. it's the Hudsucker proxy. <laughs> this product is the hula hoop. It is the circle. Yeah, whoever sold it, fucking sold is Tim Robbins of himself. It's just ah. Uh, not even the Jonas Brothers can make me want to buy this product, and that's not great. Uh, so the third commercial, second to last, is uh, a, a glimpse inside of the Baby Bottle Pop factory. Yeah, once I again, the, I feel the like premise. M- want more high production values. Like, they have lots of props, a cool set, nicely lit. They feels like they got someone to read actual lines and do actual jokes. There's just, hey, at the Baby Bottle Pop factory, we take silliness seriously. seriously. And it's like a chicken running around. Yeah. They probably have have like the wind up chattering teeth somewhere someone's I'm running sure around there's a with like cushion. the groucho Marx mustache and glasses yeah thing. just just the, the, the like the first goofy stuff that would come to mind yeah just vaudeville if shit. you had to write down 11 silly things and it would, they gave you two minutes yeah but like not remarkable i i vaguely remember this one too but i I gotta say, did you ever buy a baby bottle pop? Did you ever have one as a kid? I feel like I've tasted one once. I but never, like I said, I've never liked them. No, I've I, never found them appealing. I never loved the sugary snacks as a kid. I always opted for chocolate. Oh, I if love I chocolate. Could. Chocolate's yeah. so good. It's perfect. Perfect candy. Um, but I also don't think baby bottle pops were kosher. So my parents, even oh, if I that's, wanted that's one, a good point. I could not buy one, even if I did. But I How is it not? It. What's not kosher about it? They just never got a kosher, I guess. They never got a hashkacha or some shit. They oh. never paid a rabbi to be like, yeah, you're good. Go find, buy it, whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah, they I didn't see a, a rabbi running around with the, in with the, the silly the chicken. <laughs> that might have been anti-Semitic. It might have been a little controversial. <laughs> we take silliness seriously. seriously. It's just people <laughs> it's the doing- It's Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> Say they do like Hafa Nagila or whatever the fuck. <laughs> they lift a kid up on a chair. It's their bar mitzvah. Um, yeah, so I never bought a baby bottle pop. I've never had one. I have no interest in trying one. This commercial was fine and I vaguely remember it. Yeah, and then finally the last one is, Animated. Uh, well, it's a bunch of live action children like sitting in a circle. It's kind of like that 70s style. I was the gonna say they're doing like the, the puff puff pass thing yeah, yeah, on a baby yeah. bottle pop. And it goes around to each of them and they go. And then they like <laughs> turn into a, a, an animated, a pretty baby. horrific animated baby well, looking think, thing. I think they're advertising like a Webkins like yes. service where you can go on you and get like, a code with every baby bottle pop, and then you could input the code and you can make your own crazy baby. Yeah. I think. <laughs> um, and it's almost like a postopia type Webkins type thing. Um, and I guess that those animated babies are what your baby Sona looks like on <laughs> creepybottlepop.com. <laughs> it's gross. Um, but this one I had never seen because it very much feels like it's of the year 2015 where everything needs to have an online social component. Yeah, right, right, right. I, I'm sure there was a kid's bop there. Yeah, no, there definitely were a few kids bop commercials. There was like, go online. Yeah. I, and create I a kid's bop. So I always love hearing the caveat where like kids ask your parents ask permission your parents. before going online. <laughs> And I'm like, mm, I never did that. I and now I wish kid. my parents would ask my permission to before go online, going online. Because they have very poor web literacy skills. Because they do think that Joe Biden drinks children's adrenochromes mm. now. Well, he do be drinking the adrenochrome. That's true, you but they, they have the process wrong. Yeah, they don't understand. They think it's just like a simple like needle into an IV drip. It's yeah, actually no, 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 much no. more complicated. They have to sacrifice the children yeah, in a Malak, ceremony. the right? lord of ancient yeah, pagan deity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I just, I wish my parents were a bit more open-minded. <laughs> yeah, they're on some fucking like Drudge Report shit, which is like the wrong way to go. Drudge Report is like- I'm on that Q shit now. Yeah, we on that Q shit. We are heavily pilled. This is actually a QAnon podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Dan, on a scale yeah. of Kevin Jonas to Joe Jonas, what would you rate Baby Bottle Pops gonna, for these commercials? I'm going to have to give this one a Naked Brothers band. Oh, 
fuck? Because it makes me a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, bad name for a band made bad by name, adults. Bad idea. A lot yeah. of people like it for some reason. I don't know. Um, we got any more commercials? Nope. That was that was all all the listener mail. Oh, that we got that was I'm, a nice that was I a nice collection. I apologize if I'm wrong. Well, they can stay. The other two need to step up their game because you guys sent me some <laughs> horrific shit. It feels meaner when you're not mean to all of them. <laughs> yeah, well, something about being like "fuck you," all of our listeners, you all suck, day. but being like "you suck, you suck," you're they cool. Can stay. Fuck you, Listen, fuck you. okay, I don't care about my listeners' feelings. I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to speak you the really truth. Should That's be. why. No, 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 no. Listen, I'm here to be listen, liked. Listen, listen to me. I don't agree with him, guys. I'm a truth teller. This is why I pick up the microphone. It's to say the uncomfy truths that no one else is willing to say. I have a calling. I just I want to thank everybody this, for sending in a emails. Sellout, a coward. A it, baby. It was nice. A little piss baby. To give our, this is why we're not friends. Uh, you, I work with a little piss baby. This wouldn't baby. be possible without <laughs> viewers like you. This is not PBS, Dan. We're here to tell people Jake, what they need to I hear. Wanna, I know you're in a mood, but I'm I, in a bad place. I do right want to thank Please, you I need too. To help. This is a cry for help. It means a lot. <laughs> Thanks, but even though we're not friends anymore, I you know. would still come over. Yeah. Um. Legit though. Thank you, everyone. These were. This was a lot of fun. Yeah. This was a good one. The, fu- the fucking insane commercials. Some of the worst shit I've ever seen. But I always love bad shit. Once again, go ahead. Send any commercial suggestions that you may have to Commercial Boys Podcast at Gmail dot com. Dan, where can listeners find you online? People can. Have just follow me on Twitter if they want to. I'm at mm-hmm. Dan Feingold. People can follow me on Twitter at Aaron Burko. It's spelt like the 18th century politician. Um, People can follow me in real life. I live a five. You're going to your- have to bleep this out, <laughs> my guy. You do have to bleep this I out. I just think it's funny for me to risk forgetting to bleep it and just <laughs> doxing myself for no reason bad, immediately bad after idea. coming out as pro Q. Pro QAnon, I was going to say, we are a QAnon podcast now. <laughs> um, I will not be revealing my personal information because I also don't trust Dan I wouldn't to bleep maybe- it. <laughs> I wouldn't. You might forget. Um, I'm just going to say it in voiceover. <laughs> you're, oh, no. I got to start editing these episodes that's it oh also you can listen to our other podcast first film yeah first film podcast you can listen to it wherever podcasts are maybe i'll make a twitter handle for it someday i don't fucking know one day yeah we re- we review uh the, the first the directorial debut of, of a different director each episode. yeah we talk about their filmography and see like what we can pull out of their first film if there's anything interesting yeah, blah, that, blah, like, blah. Guides, whatever who gives a shit bad another bad podcast we do um thanks for listening guys Happy, whenever this goes up, happy Thanksgiving, happy holidays, whatever. Stay safe. Okay, it's Thanksgiving today. Yeah, yeah, So in yeah. what scenario does wishing them a happy Thanksgiving as we record If it comes out around November of 2021, my guy. <laughs> That's actually very possible. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. Baby bottle pop, baby bottle pop. You can lick it, shake it until you get it. Man, these shows are getting longer and longer. Mm-hmm.